Asking your dog to do something just because you said so is the equivalent of your boss telling you to work for no money. Now maybe if you work for Arnold Schwarzenegger, he could force you to do the job. However, it's not a very good way of motivating anybody, is it really? And let's be honest, how are you gonna feel about Arnie in the long run? Now, you love your dog, right? So why wouldn't you use an effective training tool that has an amazing byproduct that tags along completely for free. You don't have to do anything. During your training, if you use food and the dog sees it as fun, it has this amazing ability to build the relationship between you and your pet. At the end of the day, a dog that wants to do something is gonna do it better than a dog that is made to do it. Dogs are very intelligent animals. Um, in fact, they're much more intelligent than we give them credit for. A lot of the time, they learn not only what we want to teach them, but they pick up on things that in fact, we might not have meant to teach them in the first place. So, if you're using a food lure, you need to be careful to remove that food lure as soon as possible i.e. waving a piece of chicken under the dog's nose to get him to do a behaviour. You need to remove that out of the picture so that the dog doesn't become reliant on seeing it all the time. Or, start without any food in the first place. Cue the behaviour, mark the behaviour with a clicker or a marker word to let the dog know that he's got the right answer. And then, and only then, reach for your treat and that way the dog will learn that he doesn't have to see or smell the treat for it to be worthwhile to do the behavior first of all there is a big difference between bribes and rewards bribes come before a behavior and they are not a very effective way of training Rewards come after the behavior and are a very effective way of training. So um, you don't have to carry food around with you for the rest of your life. Although there is nothing wrong with that whatsoever. I practically live in my treat bag, okay? Um, however, those people that don't wanna carry food because they might find it a pain or whatever, um, they then transfer onto um, different rewards once the dog is fluent in that particular behavior. So let's talk about a sit. If your dog knows how to sit, then you don't have to reward him every single time um, with food. You could maybe use praise and use food sometimes. And the more effective than praise is using a life reward. If you use life rewards, you can reward your dog throughout his entire life and keep that behavior at a very high level. What I mean by life rewards are being let off the lead. Uh, some dogs will find sniffing another dog's bum a life reward. Um, being let out the door is a life reward. Um, so there are many, many different things. But what I'm trying to say is that you don't need to carry food around for the rest of your life. It's just an effective training tool. Make sure that you deduct a portion of your dog's daily feed to compensate for you training with lots of treats. If your dog is eating too many calories and not getting enough exercise, they will get fat. It doesn't have to be that way. Why don't you use a portion of your dog's food as his training treats? and save the real high value rewards such as chicken, hot dog, ham, cheese, peanut butter 
for the really distracting environments or for the more difficult behaviours. Um, something else to bear in mind is that they're also not really working for the taste. They're more about the scent. We're talking about the dog. The scent, the power of the dog's nose is so powerful. So you don't have to use massive chunks of treats. You know, you don't have to give your dog a quarter pounder every time he sits down. I personally use pea-sized treats for my dogs and for the real small guys, even just a quarter the size of a pea for those ones. Positive reinforcement isn't about food. It's about finding something that your dog likes enough that is willing to earn it. The reason that food is used on a regular basis is because it is very easy to work with and most dogs love to eat. Now, if you've got a Labrador, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, another benefit to using food is that you can do many, many repetitions. If I was going to throw a ball every time my dog did something right, I'd have to throw it, wait for him to run out, pick it up and bring it back before I could throw it again. Whereas while I'm waiting for that dog to do that, if I'm using food with this dog, I can do 10 repetitions in that time. Once your dog is reliably performing a behavior in all situations, then you're not gonna need a food reinforcer for that behavior anymore. Um, Remember, if we were talking about corrections, they work in the same manner. They're both about motivation. What you have to do is decide, do you want to work with something that your dog really likes or something that your dog wants to avoid? I know where I stand. Learning comes in steps. Um, you don't start maths and then try and tackle algebra the same way as you wouldn't have your first boxing class and jump in the ring with Mike Tyson. Um, we need to make it easy for our dogs. We need to set them up to succeed. So build up the distractions as you go. One way to do this is to train in different environments. So for instance, training at home would be the equivalent of nursery. Moving to the backyard is going to be middle school or primary school and then the front yard could be secondary school okay uh, finally being in the park or being in the middle of town center that's going to be your university level but it's all about setting the dog up to get it right now one of the main differences between humans and dogs in their learning is generalization we're pretty good at it dogs not so much. If you, let's say dad's taught us to change a tire in the garage. If you've learned that skill in the garage, you're gonna be able to do that anywhere, pretty much. Whereas a dog won't. If a dog could change a tire and he was taught to do it in the garage, he would then need to be taught how to do the same skill in a public car park or on the hard shoulder of a motorway. And each new environment is another level of difficulty for your dog. Positive reinforcement is one of the four quadrants of behavior modification. Positive in its simplest terms means it's a mathematical thing. It means to add something. Reinforcement means to strengthen or encourage your behavior. So when you're dog training, when you're teaching your dog new skills, the whole idea is to teach him new and appropriate behaviors. And the most effective way that you can do this is by giving your dog something that he likes when he gets something right. It can be anything from a walk to your affection or even using a toy or a food reward. The information in this video 
is also available to PPG members as a client handout. And it's been put together by Nikki Tudge, Carol Burns, and Leah Roberts. I thank you all.